Generals, gentlemen. Hello and hello and welcome back to the Generals, gentlemen. We are in a bit of a hurry because we missed the three seconds of this game. Um, we are currently casting a live ranked game between these two teams here. It looks as though they're going to be a very aggressive invade. But again, again, the uh, command attack will ward off the purple team. Yeah, I don't think the purple team will be Let, going let's in see there. Can, let's see if we can quickly introduce these players here on the blue team. We do have Nomi, our majestic heroic, Adam Murphy as Nomi. Uh, Floor Ninjas as the Vayne, Valiant as the Jarvan Bushi as the Oriana, Korv as our Vladimir, and they are against... Uh, on purple team, we have Dark Malak as the Ari, Kurin Yuki as the Aatrox, Nama Lamanablan oh God. as the Sona, <laughs> that should be fun, FBI as the Nasus, and Delusion as the Caitlyn. Fantastic. Um, so basically, we'll have to see how this game actually goes. We're looking very... Looking forward to actually casting some awesome ranked games, because these ranked games are intense. They're both gold, gold level teams. Yeah, so yeah, Blue are going for their gold promo at, uh, at the moment, which is how we know. We actually so, know Mad Nomi. Best of luck. Mad Nomi is my, my, my hero. He's my idol. He's a pretty cool guy. My it's pretty awesome. So it looks as though um, the jungle from Purple will go for Blue. Yeah, Huron. jungle Aatrox, which is actually quite powerful. And yeah, really good um, counter jungling and things like that. I'm surprised he's going for Blue, despite having no mana. Um, yeah, pretty interesting choice. I guess he's going for cooldown reductions yeah. and uh, things like that. Um, yeah, the thing is he does scale off late game, so we'll have to see how that goes for him, whereas we do see the uh, Jarvan of Valiant. Uh, they're going for his red buff first. Fair enough. So, uh, Nasus versus um, Vladimir in this top lane. Vlad's not someone you really see much. I don't think he really scales well and does a lot of damage in those team fights. Yeah, I've been seeing him more in, like, um, in in the uh, top lane played a little bit uh, at the moment. That's just because I'm playing, you know, blind pick and things like that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's pretty much the only reason. You don't really see him a lot in the LCS or anything like no, that. No, I don't think I saw him in the LCS at all. So, interesting choice here from the blue team. But we'll have to see. Will it actually pay off? And now, um, it looks as though, yeah, Mad Nomi on the, um, on the Nami and Floor Ninjas on the Vayne will be a very aggressive bottom lane there, because Nami has a lot of CC, and, um, Vayne has a lot of, basically, uh, of burst and chasing potential. You can tumble onto your opponent, despite being out of position slightly, whereas Caitlyn and Sona are a very defensive lane. The long range on, um, on Caitlyn... And basically, like, no real CC on Sona. Yeah, I think the Acro Prism's really going to force off Namalan's, um, the, uh, her poke, her Q poke, um, just because she won't be able to get it out because of the, the Acro Prism's just going to force her off. Looks, Looks as though there will be an engage here by Aatrox. Will he actually get the hit, though? He does have the red buff, so cancel Bushi down. Will flash out of the Dark Flight, though, so burning a flash, never a good thing to do that early in the game, but then again, did also burn the Ignite from Dark Malak here. That's a really nice Duke actually just sticking around so you could get the flash off and uh, avoid the Dark Flight there. Yeah, so uh, Ninja's actually getting pushed back quite far. Caitlyn just has so much poke, especially with um, the Him of Valor. That'll yeah. give uh, Caitlyn the extra damage. So Ninja has to make sure she doesn't get keep getting caught by these um, Piltover Peacemakers because they can definitely damage her down. Even Nomi as well is getting forced back, so this Caitlyn is playing very aggressively. Yeah, even auto attacks, they can't really deal with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised to see the. Um, the oh my god! Lane first blood! At the prison under tower down. though, so all almost killing Sona, but meanwhile there's also a Genki in the mid lane from Valiant, will he actually uh, burst down Malik? Hasn't flashed yet I don't think, so maybe gonna be saving it actually, so that's gonna be a very nice play from Dark Malik, actually not flashing despite but being Charm tempted to. Charm does land into Bushi Ooh. though, and she took a really great amount of damage there. Almost get taken out, but now Dark Malik is Oom on um, that Ari, but then again here comes Kuran on the um, the Aatrox, maybe gonna try and get the gank, but no, yeah. Bushi backing off playing Probably it smart. Probably gank up the top wall looking for some counter jungler, which would be really like to see from um, the Aatrox early game. But this blue turret's taking a lot of damage this early into the game, despite the uh, recent um, health increase to the turret. So this is some crazy aggressive play here from the purple team in the bot lane. Oh yeah, definitely. It looks like in the top lane, looks like Korv um, is actually not getting the better. He's not going to get the better of FBI at the moment. I think the uh, Spirit Fire is going to do a good job of forcing off uh, the lanes. Looks like Man Nomi's taking a fair bit of damage there as well from uh, Nemalan in the bottom lane. Yeah, but looks like there might be actually a gank here in the top here. We are seeing Nami, uh, Sona rather, is now out of mana. So we're probably going to have to see a recall um, from from Sona. Otherwise, she can't really do much with we her saw, low mana. We did see the Dark Fly coming from Kurian, but Korv is just going to pull in and just ab absorb all that damage there. Yeah, Vlad's a very hard champion to gank because of the sanguine pool he can escape from a lot of the um the cc and the ganks whilst his sanguine pool gives uh, his transfuse rather gives him a lot of regeneration in the lane yeah so, so he should be yeah fine up there and definitely um 
definitely should be fine against the physical damage ganks of Kuran. Yeah, so still, once again, the purple team is pushing so hard in the bot lane, but now here comes Valiant, and will they get a nice gank here? There's no wards or anything, they're yeah, going into Delusion. Nine Calvin, it slows him down though, um, does manage to get the combo, but not getting the stun or knock up at least. Yeah, I think there was in fact a ward in Tribush there from purple team. Oh, there was, sorry, yeah, yeah my bad. Good, good ward control there, so nice, nice ward to be placed actually, just to make sure that Valiant doesn't actually just come through um, the top there to get the gank. Yeah, the mine got caught, had that ward not actually been there, because it was nice positioning, um, but meanwhile, we are seeing Vlad has backed off, yeah. going back into the lane, and he does actually have picked up, uh, I think, an Amplifying Tome. Yeah, it looks like it as well. So Kuran's doing a good job farming away. I think I called counter jungling before. I think I ever thought he was on blue team or something like that when he was in his own, actually, in his <laughs> own jungle. Enough. Whoops, the daisies there. Also, a Rejuvenation Bead as well on the Vlad, so that will give him even more lane stain. He probably had that before. So, yeah, Vlad is such a hard person to push out of the lane with his regeneration, especially with the Sanguine Pull. So it's actually he's a good pick in that sense, but he doesn't really have a lot of damage and a lot of team fight potential. His Hammer Plague is quite nice because it does give them the damage amplification. So if you land on the entire team... They will take a lot more damage than normal. Yeah, it's pretty bad. As well as the fact, like, he can't pull all the time, they have to remember. Oh, it's a long cooldown. Like, yeah, and it's like 20% of his health, I'm pretty sure, that it actually costs. So you really don't want to be spamming it all the time. So the Spirit Fire oh, um, will actually do a fair good job there. But it looks like we did see... Um, who was it? Uh, someone Nami got, got taken gang. out Nami here. got taken out by a gank there. So that was a um, nice play from Dark Malik, having some very fast... Um, so very fast play. There was a war bee. Must have gone through the river. So uh, we didn't miss that, unfortunately. Um, the thing is, yeah, with, with pull, though, is if you, if you do it through the minions, you get a lot of your, your health back because it gives you, like, um, life steal. Um, so if, if you're sanguine pulling through minions, it's okay. But if you're pulling out in the open, it is a pretty big health drain. Yeah, so Delusion is actually um, doing a quite a good CS job down the bottom. He's actually 20 ahead of oh, uh, four ninjas. It's actually pretty serious, and it hasn't actually gone back yet. Um, I'd definitely say she'd have enough for a BF sword, probably. Um, we'll just click on paint and we could probably get a gold uh, lead there. Oh, yeah. that one? Yeah, that one there. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, oh, wow. definitely having 2, enough. 2,300. Yeah, that's a lot of gold. So maybe and yeah, we did see the BF uh, going down there as well as the level level one boots there. Yeah, good choice. But meanwhile, there was an engagement here from Valiant onto um, Krasix, and now here comes Corv as well. He's actually running into his tower. Though. The transfuse will tick off. The hammer play will tick off, but it won't be enough to actually secure the kill here. He's going under the tower though, but he can get Sanguine pull away from him if he needs to. But will he be able to? Oh, he does get taken out by the um. Purifier. That's a double kill there oh my for God. FBI. I mean, he, that's a really good um. What is it? It's a Sans, I believe. A Fury um, of the Sans. Fury of the Sans. He's Alders. He combined that with the Spirit Fire and just really nice withers. That was really good timing there on his ult right under the tower just when the um, push was coming in from Corsa. So he's going to get a double kill there. Absolutely fantastic play from FBI. So Blue Team in a bit of trouble here. Never a good thing to feed the top lane two kills, especially on a, um, what is he called? His Nasus, sorry, because Nasus scales so hard in the late game with his siphoning strike that if he gets a lot of kills and items, he can be a very scary person. Yeah, it's interesting to see him in top lane and not a jungle or something like that. I mean, he can do a lot of oh. damage and looks like that. Yeah, it's a bit different. You don't want him in jungle. Well, I mean, Nasus. Yeah, I mean, he's just so far away from dragon. He's just so effective, like a dragon killing and things like that. He's going to have to come down for that. I mean, I'm surprised we haven't actually seen Purple Team try and take control of the uh, first dragon yet. The problem with having Nasus in the jungle, though, it means yeah. he can't get enough stacks on his Siphon Strike. That's true. If he's in, like, a, in a lane, he can get a lot more Siphon Strike hits, which is a very important thing for Nasus. Yeah, he's doing a pretty fantastic job in that top lane. So, yeah, definitely uh, uh, Blue Team doing a fantastic job this game. Four, four kills to uh, nothing with quite a uh, bit of a gold advantage there as well. Yeah, and a tower in the bottom here. As Corp is actually moving into the bottom, as we have a lane switch as well, as we are now seeing Ninjas and Nami move into the, the uh, top lane, not, not a bad idea because basically of how pushed back they were getting, where now Corv can pretty safely farm, and if he needs to, he can always ascend and pull out of that. So yeah, I, I like definitely. the lane switch. Yeah, it's quite a good idea. I mean, really need to take control of um, FBI in the top lane, and they really couldn't do much against Illusion and Cumberland in the bottom lane just because of how fed oh they my were. God, He's so going to get shut down. That's an excellent crescendo there from Namalon combined with the ace in the hole from Delusion. Yeah, you can't sanguine pull through a crescendo. That's a um, pretty bad play here from Blue Team. But then again, um, the other thing as well with, with Vladimir, he's good against Kaelin because basically if um, Ace in the hole gets fired, you can just send him pull through that. Yeah, so that's the uh, second oh tower there <laughs> down the bottom for Purple Time. Surprise, it looks like they're going to just keep pushing, try and get the, uh, uh, the, the next tower as well. I mean, all they have to worry about is Corv really, and this is another lane top. So it looks like, yeah, we'll force um, Valiant back to try and control oh, that Oh, Maxi Cataclysm onto this. Kaelin, though, doesn't have the cooldown, perhaps. 
as um, Caitlyn will survive because she's out of mana. But now here comes Corv as well. But can they catch up? Not with Ari there. But then again, Malak will come in, but will actually miss the charm. Now we do also see Bushi as well moving in to get the engage here. Looks as though Shockwave will actually land on both of them. Delusion will uh, barrier through that, and she's taken down. It looks as though Sona will be next as Ari will run for her life. Yes, yeah, Sona gets the kill though on the Java. Now Ari's being very aggressive. Would maybe try and catch down Bushi and Bushi even Vladimir as well. So low. Sona's getting she's getting pretty low here. But uh, looks as though oh the flash for the orbital deception, make the double kill though. Will Corb get away in time? But no, Darth Malik out of mana. She's on the run now. Vlad not needing mana may actually try and chase her down. That's but I'm a pretty nice sure. ward there from Dark Malak, managing to ward out that bush. Yeah, just to make sure she wasn't baiting her with a charm. Um, but yeah, no, Ari will get away from that. Having the same movement speed, so very nice plays here from Purple Team. Yeah. So they're playing this so damn Absolutely well. Absolutely fantastic. I love that flash over the wall into the Sona. deception. Yeah, yeah, putting out that double kill. And Sona's like, yeah, man, I can get some kills on you. Doesn't matter, I'm support. Well, they, they both flashed for a kill. Yeah, I'm surprised yeah. Sona got it. She must have been leveling her Q, perhaps. I'm not really sure. I think she must have been, yeah. Because it has been a very aggressive lane, and if you... Oh, wow, almost died um, on Darth Malak. So yeah, if you, if you level the... Um, uh, what is it called? The Q. Um, oh, okay. I just don't even remember it. So it's a very hard yeah. name. Anyway, it's very so tough. Sona's Q gives the ADC more damage, and actually looks as though Corb may get caught here by Kuran. Um, he can run away, though, with the ghost being popped, but it looks as though Caitlyn is moving in. Can actually gaze in the hole here, but then again, it's pulling through that. Will save his life. Command yeah. Protect may actually save him as Nazar is moving in. Will he get the, um, the, the, what's it called? Ah, oh, crap. Fire, no, the, 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 um, yeah, no, it doesn't actually need to land. I think he, uh, Nessa's landed the, uh, Wither there. The Ace in the hole. Oh, Wither, sorry. Yeah, yeah, Wither. Yeah, yeah, Wither. Um, so basically, what was I saying? Ah, oh, balls, 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 that's okay. Yeah, nice command protect anyway <laughs> there. Um, unfortunately not managing to save them. Uh, that's, that's, that's what I was saying, yeah. sorry. Yeah, if Sona levels her Q, oh, that right, will give yeah. the ADC more passive damage. So it will give her even more poke, especially on a Caitlyn. So it's actually a very nice aggressive lane combination. Caitlyn with a long range, Sona with the supporting damage to really give the ADC so much burst, or damage rather, and just kind of really push the team down. Well, that is really going to be a big push up the bottom from Team IC. I think they're going to grab that turret, and they might even grab the in hit. We do see uh, a bit of engagement. Push Shendo actually there. missed the Jarvan. Missed the Jarvan there. Kuran is actually going to engage, and they're actually just going to oh melt God, through that, Bushi. That was absolutely ridiculous. That Nasus does so much damage with the items, the farm, and the stuff and strike stack. So it looks as though Blue Team have no chance in hell losing the inhib at a 12 minutes yeah. 30. And Blood so, Bowl is still up for Kuran as well. Um, hasn't actually been popped this entire game. We just see the top tower go down there, but it's not really going to matter. They're going to go for this um, the middle tower. The oh, Cataclysm does come down though. Did pop a Blood Well, so no death here on Aatrox, and they're actually dark fighting away. So I uh, did actually get the Blood War, but not really a big deal considering you blew the Cataclysm and almost lost the Nexus Tower. Yeah, a bit of an incorrect placement there. I mean, you really don't want to gauge onto a Aatrox that has... Um, don't want to engage on the Atrox that has his passive yeah. available. It's really you're not you're not going to get the kill. But then again, um, the Blood so World's cooldown is much longer than Jarvan's Cataclysm, so it is a, a good exchange, I guess. Yeah, again, it change of abilities, but um, yeah, Blue Team being quite far behind now. I mean, they've uh, lost all three towers in the bottom lane. Actually, the uh, the Nexus turret uh, the, did that actually take a fair bit of damage. Like it regenerate, doesn't yeah, matter. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Um, so the top tower's getting pretty pushed as well, but it won't even matter because now Dark Malak is on the move and may actually catch ninjas. But Vayne being quite mobile with her tumble may actually not survive. By this, but actually will engage on Malik, dodging the charm and the condemn. So, very incredible play here from Ninja. But she will try and run away from this spirit rush. We'll do a bit more damage and try and connect the rest of the abilities here. So, for Ninja, trying to get the condemn on the wall, but not being able to land, unfortunately. Nice positioning there from Dark Malik, not going anywhere near those walls and therefore avoiding that condemn. Yeah, didn't even need another charm or anything like that. Absolutely fantastic play there. Yeah, Ari just having way too much damage there with the three kills. Needlessly large rod, two Dorans, Finch Codex having a lot of damage, too much for Vayne to deal with on her own. Oh, definitely. I think as well, we've got um, Delusions actually on two kills now, so she has managed to pick up her Bloodthirster. Yeah, that'll give her a lot more damage now, at least. And so another team, another tower will go down for Blue. And we are seeing how much Siphon Strike actually does. Once he lands it on the tower, it does so much chunk of it down. There will be the Dragon Engage, though, perhaps. going to be a 2v4, though, for the Purple Team. Not a good position to be in. Current engaging there, but he's going to get caught out of position and absolutely get melted down with Blood, though, not being up. Delusion does, in fact, manage to uh, 90 caliber net away from that engagement. They will lose the tower, but getting the Dragon is always nice to do. Um, but can Vayne actually defend this next tower? Probably because she has a lot of damage against the Super Minions, but Blue will definitely get this, though. It looks as though um, Delusion is trying to steal this with the Q. Oh, Malak on the uh, child as well. Oh, wow. I think Blue Team might even have to back off. I'm not sure if they can engage onto this. Valen is engaging, but I don't think he has Cataclysm available. He does uh, jump on toss onto there. Corb's getting pretty low here. Maybe taken out by Dark Malak, but then again, Delusion is caught in the Cataclysm. So it looks though like she'll go down as well, but Valiant is so Delusion weak. Delusion has so much damage though. She's absolutely nuts. And the ace oh. in the hole just before Valiant goes into the bush, managing to secure the kill there. So Nomi uh, backing away with his life though, but the dragon wasn't actually taken for Blue. That's very nice play from Delusion and yeah. Dark Malak here. So Blue Team 
be definitely getting their ass handed to them. Yeah. They, they sacrificed the Talf, they didn't even get it in the end. Um, with a will actually slow ninjas down, but won't be enough. But actually, no, it might be a nice crescendo though, but there was the cleanser. That will give the chance to escape, but then again, one more Q and he's dead. The was used there onto Kirshi, but it wasn't actually enough. It was a bit of a missed time there. I would have used it a little bit earlier. That Siphon Strike just destroyed the vein in the face, and now looks like Bushi may be next, actually. Dissidents will slow him down, but will it be enough? It will, as now we do see Valiant moving in with a flash. Will he try and lock him down? No Cataclysm, but there goes the Hammer Plague, so it looks like he's dead to me. Yeah, he will, in fact, um, fall during this engagement, but Malak is engaging from the back, and now he's going to go down onto Bushi. Bushi taking a lot of damage. The Knight actually will manage to tick off, but Dark Malak uh, will be shut down. The, um, the exhaust almost saved um, Bushi because when you're exhausted, obviously you do less damage with your spells, but still, it was enough to get the kill because I guess Ignite does true damage. I don't think um, exhaust lowers Ignite, does it? Yeah. Um, I don't think it does, no. Um, Kuran actually just took the dragon there as well, so the second dragon of the game, I believe, for Pebble Team. Yeah, they're doing very well. 4 to 14, and we're all seeing almost, uh, well, it's 20,000 gold for blue, 30,000 for purple, so... Not very good. Not very oh, good Valiant good. combined with uh, Kuran looks like they're actually not going to engage on this one. Bobwell is not actually up for this, and looks like with Delusion there as well, uh, nice trap there from him. And the, I don't the, think they'll engage on this. The red buff will slow down Valiant, so that's going to be a lot of damage here from Delusion, as now Turn is moving in, though. No. Crescendo is not available, no. Because you can use Tonga Slayer, you just slow them down at least, and that will help Ace and Hole probably get the kill, but oh, oh nice Sanguine Pearl there from Core. Cool. He'll get away by the looks of it, almost dying to the Q, but then again, Command Protect will save him as well as the Flash being burned. So this Sona is playing very great with a lot of damage as well. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic game with uh, the five assists there. She has no damage. Oh, I mean, you a lot of damage. Delusion's getting caught by the shockwave though, but like, Valiant's very exposed by himself. Not many health there. We'll get taken out by Delusion. A little bit greedy there. Diving in with like, what was it, three bars of HP? I think that might have been it, yeah. So we'll have to see, will they actually hold the tower? Doesn't look like they um they will be. Yeah. They're getting caught here. There goes. Actually get knocked down. Oh, like and Bushi's next. Get onto Kukan, but Kukan doesn't, of course, have blood well available. He can dive as much as he wants, so he'll get taken out there, but that'll be fine. He'll just regenerate. You know, here comes Corp, but not having enough by himself. Delusion is going to do so much damage to that tower, especially with the Sona, to give her heals when she needs it. I think they will manage to grab this first tower. Yeah, I think blood well is up. I can't, how do you tell if blood well's up? Blood Bowl, it'll be, um, it's actually red bars instead of white bars. White bars indicates how much oh, okay, um, sure. health is actually in the um, blood uh, well, in the blood well ready to be used. And then um, the red indicates it's ready to be used. Ah. Passive is up. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. The more you there know. There you go. So, uh, yeah, he's getting very low here. Um, was that Ace in the Hole? Didn't actually fire or something. So, yeah. Um, yeah, not sure. Oh, he's got Nomi. Yeah, I think he must have got Probably Nomi. just trying to uh, force off there. So, yeah, Kuran's definitely going to get caught here. There he goes. A um, little bit greedy, out of position, but that's okay because the next tower has been taken down. But now it looks as though Ninjas will try and catch down to Malik, having um, the chasing potential of Vayne and a um, nice um, speed boost there as well. So Dark Valley's in a bit of trouble here. Can she burst them down? Probably not against two of them. Valiant's getting pretty low here. Orbit Deception doing quite well. She will manage to get away from the, the Foxfire going down, but we haven't seen any dashes come out of her. I think it might, in fact, be on cooldown. Yeah, this Spirit Rush is on cooldown, so she can't actually get away from that. The Corv's getting pretty low as well. The so support zone almost getting another kill. So this is actually a very ballsy Sony. Yeah, not even a lot of AP there. I mean, it, her Q does scale off AP. Uh, or AD, AD. It actually scales off AD. All so right. yeah, I'm not sure why it's... Uh, yeah, I think so. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure it's a AP. AP. It might be AP. Well, I, was I don't even know. I'm pretty sure it's AP. It might be I AP. Unless they changed it, but that's okay. Um, so it looks as though Sona's in a bit of trouble here. Maybe caught by Valen. Whoa! Oh, flashing out of Cataclysm. What a flash. Absolutely excellent plays there from Nozum. And Nomi may get caught as well by Kyushu. That's just so much damage. Tidal Wave won't be enough by the looks of it because we'll Cypher Strike and he'll be taken out. Uh, so, yeah, blue team just uh, defeat after defeat here, not winning any of these engagements. No, oh, definitely not. I mean, it's 20 kills to 6, and there's a pretty much, there's over a 10k gold lead now uh, for purple team, and that's a lot of minions rushing into the base. The second in here will go down. I think the third one uh, will go down as well. Corv almost barely saving with his life, as we did see also see, um, I think it's Bushi getting caught by minions. So there goes the third in here, and that will spawn double super minions. So they're going to probably not be able to surrender until 20 minutes, and they won't be able to just then, because the Nexus Tower will get taken down. I'm sure the Nexus will follow just after that. So now Corv and uh, Valiant are moving in now to engage, but with that many minions there, I don't know how effective it will be. Yeah, they'll definitely get that uh, tower, I think. I'm not sure if they'll manage to get the Nexus in time. It depends. Oh, probably most not. Of, yeah, most of the purple team is moving in, however, and they can definitely win a team fight if they try to. The Nexus is going to get taken out by the minions by the looks of it. Though. This is engaged, though. Valiant is so low, though, he can't really do much. And Dark Malak will move in to finish him off. Then again. Illusion will get shut down by Floor Ninja. But that Nexus is getting so low here. Ninjas will perhaps even survive. No, it's once again Spirit Fire landing the kill. As now 
there also goes um, Bushi as well, so they're just getting picked off one at a time. Yeah, Corb being the only one alive. Looks like the Nexus nope. will in fact go down. Looks like they're getting giant the charm onto Corb just Quadra. to finish it off, because you know why not? That's a quadra kill Man. onto FBI. He got absolutely farmed like what was with the double kill under the tower. That really gave him the momentum he needed yeah, to scale out of control. Yeah, 140 minions, sorry, yeah, add 20 minutes is quite good. With Siphon Strike as well, so incredible plays. But also the Trinity Force gave him the um the proc that made his Siphon Strike do so much damage. So that was a very nice play from Purple Team. Blue Team giving them too many free kills early into the game, unfortunately. Yeah, fantastic game uh, from both teams. Yeah, just, just purple team, definitely. Uh, that bot only lane. Pretty hard. Oh my yeah. god. Oh my god. Yeah, it was pretty good. Normalism. Absolutely. Probably one of the best sodas I've seen for a while, actually. Like, outside the TLC. Yeah, she actually did a great job on Delusion, playing fantastically as well. Really great CS and yeah. good control. Really good control of lane. Being actually quite aggressive, given this. They're more of a long range combo. Him of Valor. I remembered it. Ah, oh, it is. So it is Q Him of Valor. So, yeah, it I think. I'm, I'm not sure how much it actually helped, but it would have helped. But I think it's like. 10, it's, 15 yeah, AD. It's quite good poke. If you it's level really it, quite is. Good poke, yeah. Well, also the damage on Caitlyn it yeah. gives. But um, yeah, so very nice play there. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching Nomi get the butt rapes. <laughs> we, we did. We did. All right, well, uh, until next time, we are the generals, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure. Good night. That was good.